Hey everybody, it's Darren Prentley speaking. Hey, it's great to have you with us today. I am really excited about our Blink uh, podcast topic today because I know this is one that I am often discussed and talked to about. Darren, help me, help me, help me. I need some help in this area. So I think to be able to build a topic that we've created today that will really help you grow more sales success in your business, but absolutely put more connection into your business. Today's topic is going to be so important. And it's all about creating more leads. And that's going to be about getting more connection with your customers. And we're going to give you some really cool insights into actually how to do that. But before we get into that, I want to get my co-host, Jonathan Creek, all the way from Melbourne on board. Jonathan, how are you, mate? Oh, very oh, good. Wow. Round of applause. Good step up, mate. This is nice. I like it. Thank you. Look at that. Sound effects. Something new, just something new to the podcast every week. Is that the plan? Well, our producer... Now that we've got one, he's earning his money, I suppose. It's good to see. It's good to yeah, see. Yeah, it is. And um, I think you're hitting on a really important topic today. It's probably, it's really interesting is that um, you know, I focus or spend a lot of time on the internet and looking at everyone who's coming out and having business solutions and strategies and all that sort of stuff. And, and when you, A, I think they overcomplicate it, everything. Um but then when you boil it down, there really is only one thing you need. And that's what we're going to hit on today, leads. How do you get leads into your business? How do you get sales? Yeah, I think, and I think the thing is nowadays when there is so many different mediums, there's so many different message options, there is so much talk online, especially about how to create these connections and how to create more lead opportunities it really does seem like it's the biggest topic in the world. And in fact, I actually think it could be one of the simplest ones that's been overcomplicated the most. Yeah, I think so. And yeah, and I go to, I love data, Darren. You know, I love data. And so I use my uh, LinkedIn inbox as a measurement of data. And I reckon I'd get more messages from strangers about, let us help bring leads into your business than anything else. I think maybe 12 to 18 months ago, it was let us build, help you build a personal brand. Yes. Which I think if you peeled the layers back was to get leads into your business. It's like this whole holy grail of getting leads into your business gets dressed up by so many different characters. Like it plays so many different roles. But at the end of the day, it's get leads for your business. And, you know, we've got five ways or six ways today, five and a bonus of yep. the stages that you have to go through in order to get not just You weren't interest. supposed to talk about the bonus. You're like, we're supposed to leave the bonus to the very end and we weren't going to talk about that. But well, we're not going to talk about that till the end, but there is a bonus at the end. Is that what you're saying? Well, I was opening a story loop, Darren, so that that hang around to the end. It's a, it's a little tactic that we use sometimes. No, I'm not supposed oh, to talk right. about the tactics either. Hang oh, around for oh. the bonus. Hang around for so the bonus. There is a bonus today. The bonus is out of the bag, mate. The All right, we'll just leave, I'm going to leave it on the end here because I know it is a really, really good one and I, I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Why don't we do something that. different? Why don't we start with the bonus? No, we're not. No, we're leaving that to the end because that's going to be really important. Let's go. Right. All right. Creating more leads. How, how are we going to do that? Where will we start? Because I, I, I talk to people all the time. They say, Darren, it just seems so complicated. Where do I actually start? Where would you start? Well, I'd define who my leads are. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it's the, it's the same in video creation, it's the same in posts, it's the same in whether you have an ice cream shop or a real estate agency or a car dealership. Define your clients. Who are they? You can't. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like if if James Cameron was to make a movie for everybody, he'd end up making a movie for nobody, and nobody would and, watch and, it. It's so true. And this is the bit that I hear all the time: is Darren, I want more clients. I want more, more clients. As soon as I ask them who what do they look like what what a bit tell me about this client most people have got no idea what that that definition looks like and i think today in business that that there is time well spent and actually going actually who are your clients mm. and i think what's also really important is that sometimes it's hard to do it for yourself 
Yeah, yeah I, cool. I, I speak to people all the time. I've been to this guru. I've been to that guru. And they've told me that, you know, my business is actually this. And I sit there and go, well, is it? Tell me, tell me, who are the last 10 clients that have paid you money? And they give me the last 10 clients and they're completely nothing compared <laughs> to where the gurus are sending them. It's like, well, these people are paying you money and there's heaps more of these types of people out in the world who must yep. be experiencing the same pain that these people are prepared to pay to have solved and you're really good at it, you know, and you could actually, you know, do this quite easily. Go versus, and talk to them. Yeah, go to, go to their friends, go to their half-step aways versus, hey, shoot for the sky and maybe you'll land a unicorn in a, on a moon crater type stuff to completely reinvent your business with no data. So that drives me mad. So it's work out who your audience is. And look, you know, sometimes we're in interesting times where people can have a number of different sort of businesses or one big business with a number of different moving parts. So, yeah, I think for you and I, we've got, you know, we've got our consulting work. We've got our big stage event speaking slash events retreat type work. And then we've got one-on-one -on -one consulting yep. work now yep. across those three i think there's some overlap but let's take the consulting work versus the one-on-one -on -one work i've got two completely different but yet well-defined audiences yeah yeah 100 percent. but but just by saying that means you've actually identified that there are different groups and we have to put some parameter around it so that's why i encourage people to go just get a piece of paper piece of a4 paper out of like the photocopier with a pen and just write down what your ideal group of customers would look like. Who are they? Where are they? And actually, what do they look like? And I think as soon as you get an understanding of who they actually are, it makes it very much easier about going to get them. So I mentioned before, going back to the last 10 people who've paid your money. That's how I do it. How do you do it? I think probably the big one for me is what uh, industry sectors or what uh, participants within an industry sector need your service or need uh, the, 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 the product that you sell. So you, you first of all identify actually who are people out there that need my product or want that service and build that, that connection around that group. Because for me, um, that's where I've, I've always come from this idea that you can build a target group or target client group in any industry reasonably quickly uh, just by getting again that piece of paper out of the photocopier and a pen and starting to be quite specific about who are they that you want to build in as clients. So, and I'll be looking at that based on uh, who, which are the industries that I want to target and then who are the participants within that industry sector who A, would need my service and B, potentially have the challenges that I can solve. Yeah, I think that's really important. I think I fell into this trap maybe back in 2014, 15 sort of era where I'd had, I'd done all my research into the space that I teach on communications and leads and sales. And I was fitting, I was trying to fit it to everybody. Yeah. Everyone I met, I can help you. You're trying to sell something, I can help you. You're trying to build a profile, I can help you. This is the solution, this is the solution. And I remember I used to do these online courses that we had group trainings and I'd have all these different people and you could just tell that they weren't clicking or they didn't understand each other and it just made the training and the process so much harder. Now, right. the moment that I defined my audience, defined my market in that training space, Away you go. bang, went yeah. like a rocket. The group yeah. comes together they have almost all f still sort of friends and then we've got spaces online where they all interact and help each other. So, yeah. And they're probably helping each other more going to each other than coming to me now. And it's because and, they all share the experience, yep. right? That's so, right. And they're all from the same clique. That's all yeah. the same the same issues, same problems, same, same conversation, mm -hmm. same language, all of that stuff because you identified that, I think, is just yeah. and such I, a... And I think the point that I'm trying to make is don't try and... Don't try and uh, force your solution onto people who don't need it. Like it's wow. not for everybody. You've got to reverse engineer that and you talk about that really well. Yeah. Number awesome. two. Number two. Where are they? Where are they? 
And I think that's the thing. You know this area very well, but the whole idea is to be able to go and find where this target group of people are or target group of, of business associates are. And you've got to start thinking more laterally. It isn't just you know, in the old days, you used to have a big phone book and it used to have lots of names and phone numbers in and you have to work your way through the phone book to try and find the group. But now it's way, way easier than that, isn't it? It's the ability for us to be able to use different mediums now to hunt out where actually they are. What you, what's a phone book? See, see, you young guys, you don't even know that there was... In there. And when I was started out, there Come was on. like a book. I like that at I've got an interesting side story about phone books. If you quick, if you want, it just quickly, I think, oh, the, the, I think the listeners will love it. I got a friend of mine, Tanzil Ali, who's a former world memory champion. I think he's four times Australian memory champion, and his greatest party trick was that he got paid by Yellow Pages, who's the business directory over here, to memorize two what? Yellow Pages phone books, and so he memorized two Yellow Pages phone books, which when we'd go to parties was quite the trick because he'd pick out a phone book, he'd hand it to someone and say, read five of the businesses, and then he could finish the page. No. Yeah, freak. Here's the thing, Darren. There's no more phone books at parties. His trick's gone. The greatest party <laughs> trick ever. Evaporated. <laughs> ruined. Gone. Disrupted. Gone. Completely disrupted. He's now, juggling, he's now juggling eggs out of the fridge. You yeah, can't no, do this trick anymore. He's trying to learn how to play the squeeze box. I think that's it. Change your game. Okay, so in terms of finding your target market, what are the ways you can do that? What would you be thinking about there? Well, I think the, I think the, the important point is you won't know where they are unless you've defined them. So step number one has to come before step number two. Yep. Step number two is don't just hit them up in a business environment. I think that's a really big key is that even though people like doing business because it pays the bills, they also hate doing business in places where business isn't meant to be. And I think this is the biggest lesson of social media, and it's been said 100 million times, but people still don't get it, is that social media doesn't really have a defined line for a lot of people. They've got, they're mixing their business and their family time in one online environment. So you can't just go in there and, um, talk business straight away. So you've got to work out where, not only where they are, but where are they when they want to do business, if you're coming to them from a business point of view. So obviously if I'm talking, um, if I'm talking social media, you've got to look into groups and that's across LinkedIn, that's across Facebook, and it can be industry wide groups or industry specific groups. So at the moment, particularly in Melbourne, there's been a real boom and networking support for small business right there's a lot of small business groups and so if you're targeting small businesses or your small business solutions then you've got to be in those groups and not just be trying to sell yourself in those groups but be helping and be a participant be a real participant in that yeah and if yeah. and i think one strategy that i use and it works quite well is if i find one person say on a platform like facebook who is defined as my ideal client i i snoop i'm in there like i'm i'm putting on my old investigative reporter hat darren and i'm going through their friends lists i'm seeing their act i'm look clicking on the activity button to see where they're commenting what are they like are they in you know who's their football team who's this i'm trying to get as much detail and intel as i can on this one ideal client because guess what He'll be linked, he or she will be linked to 10 to 50 other ideal clients. And so I call them the golden goose. You've got to find one golden goose, sets you up for the year. Love it. Love it. And the first place I'll go, and this is a little bit weird, first place I'll go is Twitter. Nice. And because Twitter is where there's not a lot of people on Twitter, but it's really defined in the hashtags and the industries and how they talk because there is so much content on there. So the algorithm is really good at putting people in containers. And if right. you can win the one, if you can win the most vocal one on Twitter, hands down, hands, ha- all the money in the world that I've got, they will be also be the most vocal on LinkedIn. Right. And Twitter's where you find them. 
Twitter is where you define them, and LinkedIn is where you do the get engagement and do business. Uh, so LinkedIn is a really good, and I think that's a, a great point. LinkedIn, especially in that business space, is a great connection point, right? Another one I want to want to get people to realize is actually by looking at industry sector groups, right? So that you're going, hey, if you're if you're looking for uh, automotive businesses, then you go to uh, online, just doing a Google search, finding what automotive businesses are in your patch, and this is in your in your community or in your local area, because that again is a great place to start developing your leads. So defining how many people that you are actually looking for are actually really close to you in your business right now. So are they in your local community shops? Is it in the slightly wider area of your community or is it maybe across your city? And it's just a case of you getting a definition of that group of people because that's where that will be an easier way for you to connect and build some more quality relationships with them if they are location-wise a lot closer. Yeah, I also think if you're heading down that path too, is local sporting clubs. Yeah. And not just going to the local sporting clubs, but joining the coterie. Every yep. local sporting club worth its salt will have a coterie group for businesses. Now, here's the benefit of these local sporting clubs is that if there's, say, like us, we're in real estate, banking, cars, um, you yeah, know, that sort of space, accountancy, all these sort of spaces, all those businesses will be involved in the local sporting club. Either they've had kids go through or yeah. they're looking for a market, like they're looking for clients. So you yeah, go there and join the coder you go in there and, and join the coder group. Guess what? And and you make it really well known what you're there for. I'm joining this coterie group to do business with local business owners. Right? Yeah. And you find the president of the club. He'll be all over you because he'll want you to sponsor something, right? Totally. Right, so you find him and you make it really clear what you want to do. I want to do business with the people that you do business with. Right, get yep. me in there. So say that line again. Say that line again. I want to do business with the people you do business with. Like, just please write that down. Please write that down because that is an absolute gem. All right, and here's the thing: the president of the club will be motivated for you to do business with his stable of clients or business yeah. supporters because yeah. that makes him look good that he's bringing yeah. them in and helping them that there's an added value than just having a sign sitting on a fence yeah. so not only are you going in there you won't even have to introduce yourself because old bob the president's going to do it for you yeah absolutely right? and then what you do to bob if bob's a bit cool after a couple of weeks if you get to oh dude this guy's just in his you you say hey bob if i can do business to a value of this amount, I will give this percentage back to the club. So are you saying now building some spheres of influence? So people around you, so so not only are we identifying different groups, but we actually also are identifying individuals that can be really strong and referral to us. Yeah, I think joining yeah. groups is great, but if you can yeah. then, once you get in the group, find the key person just, of influence. But I just say, you don't actually just have to be in a group. You can find people in your community that are actually very well connected and can build relationships with them that provides you with opportunities going, you know, referral opportunities forever, you know, if you build and hold on to those relationships. So, again, really, really key. I think I think that's right. I think a lot of people just cruise through the world on, on cruise control. Yeah. There's a few people you got to look for. you got to look for the golden goose on social media. Yeah. And you got to look for um, the referral king or the promoter or the guy, in yep. your, the yep. connected king in your community. Yep. There will yep. be, I mean, over here There's... where I am in Melbourne, there used to be this restaurant near me called, um, uh, it was called Columbo's. And the guy that owns Columbo's or owned Columbo's, sadly it, it closed. It had complicated issues. But the guy that owned Columbo's, Bill, he knew everybody. And this was a four to five hundred seat restaurant, pizza restaurant. Every kid in the area had their birthday parties there, right? Yeah. Every kid. Like, it was a monstrous place. But Bill knew everybody, and he knew them by name. So I used to make sure when I was launching my business, I would go there at least once a month and have a coffee with Bill. And say, Bill, you know, oh, yeah, work's going okay. I've got a few slots. Yeah, I'm trying to do consulting work into... Uh, accountancy firms or I'm trying to make videos for sports clubs or whatever 
real estate agents. Mate, by the end of the day, Bill Bill would have tagged me on Facebook to 20 people. Yeah, love it. And so so what we're saying is, I think probably what we're saying towards the end of that is that there are lots and lots of places where your clients or your leads are actually sitting right now. And your job is to be more um, investigative where, where these people are actually sitting. You've got to go and look for where they are, what groups they're in, where they can be connected to, and that's your job. So, so you've got a good, clear understanding of where they're at. Can I be brutal here? Sure. I have this real, and this is a thing that I've done in my business a lot, and especially, you know, people say, you know, hey, we've got to get that connection. We've got to get, we've got to find where these people are. But I think one of the key parts for me is you've actually got to do this task with a lot of uh, energy and really go for it. Because what I see, as soon as people know, you know who they're wanting to target and finding out where they are, the practical part of actually going and engaging with this group is an area that is often so missed. And I just give people a bit of a shake at this point and go, you've identified who you want, you know where they are, you've actually now got to get off your backside and actually get out there and actually go and talk to these groups of people because whether it's online or whether it's in the physical, you've got to do the work here to create those connections. Here's the thing. Here's, here's where I see it. I agree with that 100%. Because And this is the why I think it's a problem now. Social media, a digital, the internet, has allowed anyone to be an advertiser. Totally. All right. So they go, I know who I'm after. Now I'm just going to make some videos every week and those people need to find me. And it's going to work. That's going to work, Jonathan. John, that's going to work because I've and created it, some content. And if it doesn't work, whose fault is it? Oh, it's not mine. No, Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, face with greedy. Greedy. He lets me advertise my business for free, but I can't close the deal. He must be greedy. And this like, is the bit where I really... When was the last time... When was the last time TV th New Zealand... What have you got over there? TV3? NZ3? Yeah. When was the last time they let Darren Prattley run an ad for free? To it's just like you've got to get active in this space, right? You've got to really make a part of what your business does. And I just find these days I get really grumpy around this where, where people create a whole lot of digital and electronic formats where they do a whole lot of what I call marketing, but it's passive, man, and it's no linking and it's no connection. And, and I just go, this is where a lot of this falls down. You've got to be really active in that space. Get me off this topic, Jonathan, otherwise I'm going to go insane. <laughs> All right, so I've got to work out what content now. So we, we've defined them. We know where they are. Now how do we hit them up? I think we've given some strategies already on how to hit people up. But I think what we're talking about now is how do, how do we make the content and why are we making content? And I think that's come straight off the point that you're making is a lot of people think that this is the final step. Make the yeah. content and your business will miraculously just appear in front of you with people ringing your phone off the hook and emailing you saying, thank you for being here, Saviour Darren, because... It doesn't needs happen. No. Here's how I use content. I use content for awareness. I use content for information building. Now, yep. a couple of weeks ago, I was red hot on, on YouTube. I wanted to put a whole lot of content on YouTube and that was basically because people were coming or I was engaging with people and they didn't quite know enough about what I did or do or how I operate. So building a YouTube channel, what I'm doing now is I'm finding people who are defined. I find where they are and yeah. I send them links to YouTube videos that fix the problems that they've got. Hey, real estate agent George. I heard that you're having trouble understanding how many leads you should be getting through social media because it's not working for you. Well, my estimates are in this current market in Melbourne, you should be generating at least 10 leads a month or 10 listings a month off 30 leads a month off doing one one-minute video a day. That's the formula that I reckon should be working for you. 
Here's the link that explains it a bit more. Come back to me if you've got any questions on how I can right. make it happen for you. I just want to take you back because you said something there that was just, for me, is just really, really... We have actually got to be thinking about the problem that that target market of clients that we've identified actually has to be included in your content, right? Because what I just see, see it all the time where people are just making this, and I call it puffery content. It's just totally about puffing themselves out to be looking like they're doing stuff and actually active. But actually, what problem does it solve? How does it connect with me? And is it worth me spending my time watching it? No. And, and, and the big part about this is we're not considering what the audience's big problems are, the issues are, and what are we going to do to help solve those? Because I don't know about you, but if anyone comes online to me and says, Darren, hey, we're aware that your target group have got these issues and, and these are the things that you're, that you're you know, finding tough and there's some solutions here that we could provide, I'm going to listen to that, right? I'm going to be engaged with that. But if it doesn't cover that off, I just go, you're just not really understanding that target market very well at all. Yeah, I think that's interesting because I too listen to people who can solve my business problems. I think we've all, every business has got problems. That's the nature of business. Totally. But if those people, here's the thing, if those people come to me cold, if they message me cold, like those LinkedIn rats, you know, you know them, the LinkedIn annoying, you know, I get this. They're in my inbox all the time, Jonathan. Can you tell them to go away? Yeah, no, I can't fix that for you. Um, the link, yeah, I actually, the stupid thing about LinkedIn is you pay to get annoyed by people. That's how bad it is, right? So here's, here's how my, this is how you have to get through to me. If anyone's listening and thinks that you can solve my problem, I'm happy to do business with you. But this is how you have to do it. You have to introduce yourself with content that's valuable to me so that you gain my trust. Yeah. That I actually believe that you know what you're talking about and have the chops to be able to fix the problems that I have. You've got to prove that through content. Yeah. But content isn't necessarily going to sign the deal. Every now and then you'll get a piece of content that will drive business. So the content will work. It'll excite me enough to say, wow, that was amazing. And I'll reach out to you and I want to do business. But that's very, very rare. I'm too busy to be thinking that way. A lot of the times if I'm impressed by content, I'll go, yeah, that was really good. I'll think about it for a while. I'll go on to other things. And then if you come back into my life in a gentle kind of way, it's really interesting, not not blasting me on Messenger saying, hey, I've got your solution, 100 leads in 100 minutes. Right? So you've got to win my trust with content. Then if you take the time to come over and engage on my content and actually have a meaningful conversation, this really annoys me. Um, uh, and we'll go back to LinkedIn. I've got these videos that are on YouTube. I sometimes grab them and put them on LinkedIn. And I get all these people who are around me. They're like little satellite planets. And I love them. Like they're supporters of me. They love what I do. If They're probably listening now. But they'll just thumbs up or like my comment on LinkedIn. And I know that I've already taught them that on LinkedIn, the thumbs up and the likes are irrelevant. I need you to be making comments. Yeah. And it needs to be comments that creates another comment. That's how LinkedIn works. So don't just come and give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment that sparks a question from someone else. So if you're not doing that, if you're not actually winning me over with your trust, then engaging with my content to show that you're willing to make it a two-way street, then once you've done that, you've given me a bit of love. It could bring the romance back to business, Darren. Let's face it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Give me a bit of love, then feel free to jump into my inbox. But don't give me sales fluff, high pot. Don't give me an email that's this long. Give me two sentences. Hey, Creaky, I've noticed you got this problem. And if they call me Creaky, I know they're watching my content because that's, yeah. that's a level beyond you know, professionalism, you got this problem, I think I can help. How about we get yeah. on a call? Yeah. Love and it. then give me a link. Bang. That's it. So how in do terms we, how do of, we get to you? How do we well, well, you, Darren? I, I'm, I, I'm not as fluffy as that, to be honest. 
I want to know. I, I want to know exactly what the offer is. I want to know what problem you're going to solve for me, and I don't want you to take too long, right? So I I come with the what are the practical insights that you're going to be able to provide? Because often when I work with real estate and real estate salespeople, are a good one for this because you know I'll say, look, I've got a solution. I'm going to help your business. Well, not if I just say that part and don't elaborate any further. Most of them at that, that point don't really engage a lot because actually I've got 400 other 50 other things that I need to be doing. But if I say, hey, look, I've got eight key components that have to be in your listing presentation for you to be able to secure more listing business, they know instantly that there is a value proposition there. And being able to give them a couple of those practical insights and making sure that that fits that particular target market that you're talking to is an instant way of showing, A, I've got value to help improve your business, but secondly, I'm not gonna waste your time. And that's something for me these days is you've got to get that message across really quickly. But how do they get to you? What's your process? Because I'm I'm starting to feel like I'm a little bit precious and I need to be romanced. Where you're, as long as you give me the solution, I trust that you're gonna be able to get the solution. How do you work out how do you get? How do you work out that yes, this person's worth listening to, and this person isn't to you in your you as the customer? So me as the customer is all about the ability to apply their solution to my problem. So can I see that they have got a solution that I can practically apply to my problem and create the solution? Because that's exactly what you were saying before about four hundred people coming in saying, Darren, I'm going to be able to get you a hundred new leads in a hundred minutes. Now, you and I both know the chances of doing that to, to create any depth of relationship in any of those leads is absolutely impossible to do at that rate. So we know already I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious about it. It's marketing puffery. And you know what? I'm just not going to waste my time because it's not real and it's not relevant for me. Okay. You haven't quite given away the secret, but I think this is another episode. Let's unlock our customer journeys. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good one. All right, let's move on to number four. So we've defined our we've defined our businesses. Uh, we've worked out um, the challenges that they have. Yeah. So identify the challenges and target on that. We know where they are. Sorry, I've got that in the wrong order. Then once you know where they are and what their challenges are, you design your content so that you pique their interest. And yeah. I'm telling you from a scientific point of view. Um, and this is research based on viral videos, you've got eight seconds. You've got eight seconds to prove to the viewer's brain that you've got a story to tell with a solution at the end. There you go. You hook them over. Like, give things like bonus. Tell them that there's, like, bonus content and they'll walk all the way to the end to get the bonus. Really? Oh. Is there a bonus today? I'm not sure. I don't know what I you did with not. it. You might have scratched it. All right. So we know where they are. We've warmed them up by hitting them with some content. What are we doing next? Uh, the next one is I think we've got to be really conscious about the way we reach out, all right? So the way we reach out and the way we connect with people. And I think this is a really good part here that you go, I've actually got to make sure that you have a much clearer way to do this. Now, I'm a little bit old-fashioned, right? So what I do is I actually identify the target market group people that I want to talk to. I direct mail. Have you heard about that thing, Jonathan? It's called direct mail. You put an envelope in a post box and what happens is they transport it and deliver it at the address on the front of the package or the envelope. Yeah, I went up I went up to the post office the other day, Darren. I must oh, have been. It's a, it appears to be a little bit of a magnet for the great unwashed. But um it's okay. I'm, you know, I think I think I'm suffering I think I'm suffering lockdown syndrome that I'm just used oh. to being in my little clean so, bubble. And I had to go up and post. I had to post. I had to post some signed books, actually. Um, nice. And I was like, "Yes, yeah, so I have. I have adopted the post thing." And that's good. And the reason why I do this is because I consistently send content using post to people's mailboxes so that they open it up and it's physically in front of them, right? And it's a practical thing that I've always done because I go, actually, that physical, tangible piece that's in front of you, it's way harder to get rid of than the delete button, but I do know the rubbish bin is over there in the corner. So what I'm looking to do is to create some content and some information within that that creates and piques their attention and just then gives them an insight into that I'm actually going to be making connection with them. Do you get I that? 
and I'm going to connect with them. So I've already done the precursor like you would with your email. So, hey, I just want to let you know, I'm sending you an email to let you know I'm going to make contact with you so that you make people aware before you actually make the call. So where's the direct mail coming to this? Hold on. So we send out a direct mail, direct mail, so we don't use email. So instead of using email, we'll use direct mail. So we'll post something out to their, their letterbox. So step one, let's say, new real estate agent in town. Yes. You're going to send them a letter. Yes. And then you follow oh, up the letter. And then you follow up the letter with an email. With a no, with a phone call. Oh, you ring them. Hey, I sent Show you a letter. Up. What? A week later. What are you doing? A week here? later. Week later. Hey, Darren, I sent you a really not well. If you're Australia Post, you might have to wait two weeks so it gets there. But so maybe, maybe it's two weeks, right? But then you make your phone call to go. Hey, I hope you got the information that I sent in the post. Now, 20 30 percent of the people that we ring will say to you what. Nah, didn't get it. Didn't get it. Fantastic. That's no problem. Look, what I'll do it's, right now is I'll email you a copy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, then, you your, so then you so and now, you've just and you've just got their details off the internet because all there. So now I've got the connection, right? Yeah. And now what that does is says, look, what we're doing is we're doing some work in this particular area as a new agent in the patch. These are some things that I know you're going to be be focusing on and and conscious of. And I really want to provide you some support. So if you'd like to go to my website, have a look at these two or three things here. I've got a couple of free giveaways here to help you with this issue here. And then we can have a further discussion down the track. See, what, see what, what, I, what I've realized is that the ability to actually make connection and build that connection with somebody and just say, hey, this is the solution, it works. I'm blown away. I love it. It's so simple. Now, here's the thing. This this is why I'm blown away, Darren, because I, I too have adopted the post method recently. I've gone back to the post. Previously, it was only my grandmother sending me $5 notes in the, for my birthday and for my kids' birthdays, and they all just came to me, but that's, that's a topic for another day. My kids get it back. It's all there. But I do two things. I'm starting to post, so I do it a little bit differently. I reach out to someone and say, "How are you going? What are the you know? I'm Jonathan, or if I've met them on a live stream, or they've been in an audience, I then follow them up. Hey, great to yep. meet you on the blah 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 chat. I'd love to connect. Whatever. Then, if I think that they're a potential client, I send them a copy of the book. I give wow. that away, right? But I don't just send it in a normal envelope. I send it in a bright red envelope, so they can't miss it." So that when you do your call, hey, I sent you something two weeks ago. Did you get it? No, I didn't get it. It was in a bright red envelope. Okay. I'm going to tell you a story. We were doing some work. Can I just finish? We were... Yeah, finish go on. One and so then, so then once they get the book, the book's got QR codes in it. So they download the assets and I can see that they download the assets, but I get their email address. Love it. And then I, and then that's got a follow-up sequence and whatever. But I Love think this, I think, you made a point before, which I really want to touch on. Physical presence is massive. Now, when you said that, I was like, oh, yeah, come on. You just put stuff in the bin. But if I also go through my desk right now, let me show you. A sticker from my favorite clothing brand. Same. There you go. On my desk yeah. still. A card from them following up after the sale saying, hey, how, how's your clothes? How's your clothes? Have a discount is the code. Don't want to flash it to the lights. But then look at this. Then this struck me and I'm like, this is a little bit weird. Maybe Darren's onto something here. Google My Business. Now, now when you sign up to Google My Business, you can't activate it until you use their code that they send you. Now, are you telling me that Google can't do that digitally? Of course they can. can. They're doing this. So that this sits on your desk to remind you to keep using the Google My Business dashboard. And the dashboard and leads to your spending totally. money. And this is the part, right? This is the bit that I say, if you want to develop more leads with your business, create more opportunities where you're actually going to connect with people in the real. Start really connecting with them and stop doing all this hope and you know, you've actually got to spend some effort here to actually get to know the person and go, actually, I want to listen to your problems. I want to know what your business is like. I want to know how our service can help you. 
And I'm actually gonna take the time to find that because once you do, you will have clients for life. And that's the key message I just wanna keep is, is making sure that we do that. I just wanna give you a quick example about the envelope. You, you brought that red envelope out. We had a situation where we'd do some marketing out to a specific market sector. We'd send the uh, packages in the post, but what would happen was they would get opened by the receptionist or the admin person at the front desk. And because they saw it as a marketing or a marketing piece of collateral, they generally put it in the bin. So my content wouldn't actually get to the CEO or the director. So what we did is we came up with an idea that we created uh, some, some email, uh, some envelopes that made it look like it was a wedding invite. Oh, yes. So what it was, was when we put on a confidential to Bill Smith, and we, it was a handwritten front of the envelope. So we, we had some people in the office here who would handwrite those, and, and we'd send those out, and guess what? When it got to the, the admin person, they'd look at it, and they'd go, oh, this is a private one. I'll give it directly to them, they can open it. And they got to open it and gave the experience. And that's a key way that we developed a way bigger increase in the number of leads that helped uh, build the business. So all I'm saying to you is there is, you've got to be some creative and you've got to start thinking about how to make an impact, whether it's digitally, online, you have to work out ways that you're going to reach out to those, those people and make those connections. I agree in that I, I love that we need to I think we need to get to the point where we've got merch Darren I think this is our first t-shirt or hoodie I don't know hopefully you can see that on there post and hope equals broke it's a <laughs> posting on social media and hoping that business is going to come your way equals broke that you've yep. got to go the extra mile yeah and you've got to dig deep you've got to dig deeper in that relationship and I think that's the the, the key part that we want to get across on there. So, um, so phones, just, don't be yeah. afraid to ring. Yes. Target your content, share yeah, the assets, absolutely. and, and get you know what something physical in their hands. Yep. And do you know what number number four is on that? No. Go and have a bloody cup of coffee with no. them. Right. So just get out of your office. Go walking and sit in the waiting room for five minutes till they come out and then take them down the road to the local coffee shop, sit down and actually say, hi, it's really nice to meet you. I want to hear more about how your business got started, how you've got involved and what you're seeing in the business or the industry right now. What are the challenges? And in that discussion, what I want you to propose is from my perspective, as someone who's now met you, these are some of the learnings and some of the things that I've noticed happening in your industry, and I want you to validate these for me. I think that's a whole other episode going through that coffee conversation. It is. It is. And I think that, actually, can you write that down? Because I think what we should do is do that in our next episode. With my fountain pencil? Here's the yeah. thing, Darren. I went for the coffee conversation last Friday. Good boy. First one out of lockdown, and I must tell you, it, yeah. was a terrible, it was a terrible experience. It's post-COVID. It's just, yeah, as much as I know that we need to do it and it's important. Oh yeah. My, like, yeah, just I'm not a people person anymore, I don't think. It's just too, I'm, I've been conditioned by the government here that everyone's going to, everyone's got germs trying it, to kill me. Can you stop it, please? Can you stop it? <laughs> I'm just going to whack you because what we've got to all do is get make sure we get up on those personal connection and relationships and stop being lazy on it. It's just laziness and it's because we've been locked down and we've been told that communicating and being in front of people isn't good for your health. Well, actually, it is extremely good for your health. As long as we're careful around, obviously, all of the COVID requirements, we've got to get back going again and we've got to get back out and meeting these new opportunities that we're calling new lead opportunities to actually get to know who they are because that's how we create customers for life you don't have to enjoy it though of course you do <laughs> no i agree well, i agree i'm just being silly i'm being silly i'm being silly no no but this is about mate this is that, that, that that's exactly what we hear all the time right we hear that all the time I'll give Darren 497 excuses. How many? 497. 497. 
excuses about why I'm too busy to go and meet with potential leads or potential opportunities because I've got too much else to be doing. Well, actually, in fact, the only thing that needs to be number one priority in your business is to make connection and build those lead opportunities and to be able to be in front of the person and have these discussions changes your outcome. You know what? It changes your outcome, and I agree. Here's the thing, right? You've got those 497 things in front of doing your business, and you're doing probably 490 of those things because your business isn't going so well. And then once you go out and meet with people and you start closing deals, guess what happens to those 490 things that you had to do? It gets, they become down, to the 18, it gets down to the 18 things that you know you have to do, you should do, and it's part of your business that you enjoy. And yeah. that's the game, right? They evaporate, and then you just you just get into the flow of business. So, so get out of your office, get down to the coffee shop, meet these clients, meet these opportunities. And you know what? It may be that they say to you, "Actually, no, we don't need your product. No, we don't want to work with you." Please, please, please. At this point, do not lose the lead opportunity. That is just that they don't need your service or they don't need your product right now. But your job from now on is to nurture and hold that lead. And I know we've got another episode down the track about managing and nurturing leads, but the big piece for me here is to go hold the relationships. If they don't want your service right now, that's fine, but please hold the relationship. That is a lead for the future that you're gonna work with and once they build that relationship with you more, and then they do have a need for your service or product, you are the first person on the list. And in fact, many cases, you'll be the only person on the list. So that's where that getting out and getting face-to-face -face with those leads is such a critical part of the process. Yeah, and I think once you start reaching out to those people and building and building those relationships, when someone like, like you or me, or any other business coach comes to you and says, you've got to make 10 calls a day. Always be closing. 10 calls, 10 calls. If you've got these relationships with people who have previously said no, it makes it a lot easier to make 10 calls. Oh, the my God. not as big to call. You ring them. Hey, Bill, I spoke to you last week, uh, last month. I know you weren't quite ready. I'm not trying to sell you anything today. Just checking in on how you're going. Are you got any problems, anything I can help you with? How's life? How's the kids? How's footy? That's it. Good to see you, mate. Uh, and, Catch up soon. And, You're going to bang. Done. And you see, that's the relationship building call that you work with your leads, right? So as we know, we know where our leads are. We know what they need. We know what their challenges are. And we're now engaging them with a, at a personal level to build that connection and that level of, what's the word I'm going to put in now? Trust, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's the process that we take our leads down the track of. And that's why, for me, what you've just, just said there is that consistently connecting with those leads into the future. Oh, I mean, the amount of times, and, and literally there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of examples of this for me, where I have a mental state in me that is just that no one ever says no to me. No one ever says no, right? They might not need my product now, but they won't say, no, we won't want to deal with you at some time in the future. And just because I have that mental state, it's my job to now keep in touch with that particular lead or opportunity into the future. It's my job to keep that relationship at the front and worry about the products and the services and anything else that we do later on. So just being able to connect, build that relationship, and then being able to see what opportunities come off the back of that is the best way to grow your leads. I really love that, uh, that what you said about no. I, I, I think about it and approach it a bit differently. Um, so you don't let anyone say no to you? No, um, no, 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 no. That, people say no, but I don't take it as a no. Okay. All right? You so people say no. You don't kill it off. That's fine. That's cool. But it doesn't mean I'm, I'm not going to have a relationship with you going forward. It's not going to mean that I'm not going to stay in touch with you. Just yeah. because you don't want to list your house with me today, or you're not going to sell your house right now, or you're not going to buy the house that I've got, or you're not going to purchase the vehicle that we've been looking at, that's okay. Mm. But it doesn't mean mm. I'm not going to be in touch and I'm not going to be connecting with you and I'm not going to be making just nice phone calls like you gave us an example of a minute ago. We are actually, I'm just ringing up to say, g'day, hey, what's been happening? 
Yeah, it's really interesting. I I, I think about this a lot um, because no one likes being rejected. Like everyone wants to win. That's how we're we're brought up now. That's how we're conditioned. And I remember when I came out of university and I wanted to be a TV reporter, um, everyone told me no. My school counsellors, my teachers, my parents, my friends, they're like, mate, this ain't going to happen. Like, no, 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 no. Like, so many no's. And I remember my dad, who, my dad is a go-getter. Like, he's a, if you think you can do it, by George, do it, but make sure you give it 100%. All right? Yeah. Wow. And he sat me down and he said, you want to be a TV reporter? I said, yeah, I want to be a TV reporter in Australia. He goes, sport? And I said, no, I don't want to do sport. He goes, oh, you don't want to do sport? He goes, you don't want to be Eddie Maguire? No, I definitely don't want to be Eddie Maguire. He's an Australian personality, sports guy over here. Um, no, I want, to do, I want to do news. Oh, you want to read the news? No, no, I don't want to read the news. I just want to tell people stories. I want to get paid to do it. Hmm. The ABC? Could you work at the ABC? No, nah, I'm too... I'm too sort of right-wing pop culture to be going down the left-wing agenda of the ABC. SBS, which is our foreign language channel, well, I don't speak a foreign language, so I can't work there either. So in the end, I had three TV stations that I could go to, three newsrooms. And my dad, God bless him, wrote a list. He compiled a list of all the journalists at those stations. And I think it was 38 journalist he goes and he sat me down he goes listen because i worried that i was just going to be unemployed i think he sat me and he goes right uh -huh. um, there's there's 38 journalists on the eastern seaboard who've got the job that you want and you didn't get into journalism school at university so i just think you need to reconsider maybe you should do marketing or pr or something like that i said no no, no i don't want to and he goes you've got more chance of making an afl football team in fact, there's 456 spots on AFL football teams in the same area where you want to be a journalist with 38 spots. And I had this mentality of I was just going to take all the no's. I was just going to be smart and take the no's and just keep going in and in and however I could get in, I was going to get in. And the way that I got in, Darren, is I went and I took a job in sales. That got me into Channel 9. I worked there for six months in sales and made sure that I was solid enough that I wasn't going to get low, let go in three months. Then from there, I worked out where the cameraman's lunchroom was, which was at the back of the car park. So then I started making friends with the cameraman when they were kicking the footy. I'd go, I'd go down there in my sales suit, kick the footy, make friends with them, get to know them. Then I got them to film file tapes for me. Then I took that file tape around and just got nose and nose and nose and nose and nose and nose everywhere. And then I thought, you know what? I need to go somewhere where journalists aren't going. So I went to Launceston, Tasmania. I said, right, they're aggregating, they're sacking all the journalists. I'm going to go there for zero money. And here's the, this is the deal that I did. The woman on the phone, the news director at Win TV Tasmania, said, no. I'm not going to bring someone from Melbourne because you're just going to get your experience and then go back to Melbourne and I'm going to have to find another journalist. I want a local. And I wasn't going to let her say no. And I said, here, so I, I rang her back the next day and I said, I've got a deal for you. I'm going to come down and work for you for free. This week, you tell me the deal. But here's the deal. If I get the job, because right, I'm going for a job here. There has to be a job at the other end. If I get the job, if I prove to you I can get the job, you pay my airfares for the day that I fly down. If I don't yep. get the job, I'll pay the airfares. No risk. Mate, I went down there. She gave me the most boring, worst story of all time, but it was the lead story. And it was, a, it was industrial relations or something. I had no idea about Tasmanian politics. So I had to lean on everyone I knew in Tasmania. Like when I'm in the car with the news guy, the cameraman right. wasn't told not to help me. I had everything right. against me. But guess what? You show up. You meet with them. You connect with them. Like I rang her once I landed in Melbourne that afternoon because the story I finished the story at 3 o'clock. Finished Jonathan, it early. Jonathan, what were the chances of you getting that job via social media? Zero. None. Zero. So that that I, I went off track. I love telling stories. I think this it's an important part of this podcast to tell stories with the lessons. I understand. So that's why I jump in there. But I took I reckon I took a hundred no's. Yeah. 
and I got better at dealing with the nose. So, so, so this is the part that I just keep saying to people, stop thinking of them as no's. They're just yeah. no, not now's. And it's just not now. It, but the relationship must endure. You must endure the relationship. It's got to carry on forward. They might not want to do business with you today, but the relationship is maintained. I seriously have had relationships that I've built up over a period of time. The person has never used me, never taken me. But I tell you what, they have a conference, and guess what happened? First time they thought about, hey, let's open up after COVID, let's get people back. Guess who got the phone call first to come and do a keynote for them? Me, because I had built their relationship over three years. And you've just got to keep considering it's never a no. And that's when it comes to this development of your leads, you've got to own them over the period of time. And I think that's the key, the key part of owning those opportunities into the future to secure more business that you can handle. Now, I know that we've got the bonus content and we're going to wrap it up, but I've got one question I want to ask you. How often do people get too romantic about how their business should run? <laughs> and in, in, in terms of, you know, th this is how I want it to run. I don't want to have to do that bit, but I want oh. everything else. Look, I hear this all the time. It's like, Darren, I want to have the best, most successful business in the world, but I don't want to foster leads. I don't want to do my calls. I don't want to do 10 calls a day. I want to run my business the way I want to run it, which is great. But please accept that you're going to get the result that that model or that solution uh, provides. And if it doesn't have the horsepower in that, in that method or the, the way you're transacting, you won't get the volume to create. Look, I've got... I've got quite a few books here, and a lot of those are on developing sales, developing businesses, developing opportunities. The standard message out of all of those is you've got to do the volume of connections, right? Yeah. That's the key. So the answer to and the question is too many people are romantic about how their business should look and operate when once you get out there, and this is the thing I think, Unless you're like me, I, I don't want staff. So I have to do the bits that I don't like. Yeah. But I think for other people, if you want to build a business and you hate the relationship bit, right? Get, some, get somebody else to do it for you because if you can't do that bit, you're in trouble. What are you doing this afternoon, Darren? Making calls. Yeah. No, I thought you could come and have some peppermint teas with my clients because... Uh, yeah, it's a bit germy out there. Still. So, bonus, Firestorm. Bonus content. The bonus content. A, the bonus yeah. content, I talk about this in terms of creating a Firestorm for your business because this is the piece that when I look at lots of businesses, I actually look at them and go, how can I get these people to be more successful? To create a, what I call the Firestorm in their business. There is one way to do this, right? One way. It's increase the volume at the front of the ship, all right? So if you wanna create more business and develop more opportunities, increase that starting point in terms of the volume. So yeah, in my case, what I'd do, like if I needed more people to talk to, we would do more posts, all right? So we would be sending out, each month we would send out 100 envelopes and we would make 100 calls. Now, if, if business volume was dropping off, guess what I did? Increase the number of envelopes reaching out you got it and yeah. by doing that what it does is it means that we made more phone calls because we made more phone calls guess what we had more coffees because we had more coffees we built more relationships because we've got more relationships now we got more business mm. and my and my big thing for, from this episode is the bonus at the end of this is this is the secret right if you are not achieving the numbers that you want Go back and have a look at the very start of your business where this lead generation starts and check the volume component because I almost guarantee you that's the area that's falling down because I'm, I'm packing the rest of the parts of your business are really strong, but this is the one area that you're really uh, not, you haven't got the volume enough to be able to drive the success out of it. So just, just please review that and consider what that actually means of, of what the higher number needs to be in your business. Yeah, it's really interesting that you have um, you have people who want to operate on conversion rates around the 70 and 80%, right? Yet when you flick over to Facebook advertising and stuff, if you've got conversion rates around 5%, you're yeah. flying. Like yeah. 
you're killing it because so, at five percent you're making three dollars for every you know on a high ticket program you're making three to five dollars for every dollar you spend now that's a yeah. that's a booming business because that's you that. spend more reach more convert at the same rate it grows that's Mate, that's and that's such it's it's that's the key, right? And and this is the pit that from today's episode, when you look at you know identifying who you get your actual leads and where you want them from, where are they actually sitting? We're understanding the challenges in their business so that we can create great content that is applicable to them. We actually work out the ways we're going to reach out, whether it's by phone, targeted content. And making sure you get out of your office and actually go and have a coffee and meet some people. I think those are the key parts of this. But what I want you to, as a bonus for the end of this, is to make sure that you've got that volume high enough and making sure that that's going to build your success. It's out there, but you've really got to go and get it. Yeah, I also think with the I also think with the firestorm point too is that I think it's great to increase your volume at your top of your funnel, but also also don't be afraid to talk yourself up. Like if yeah. you are provide, you know, as long as you're not faking it, if you're providing real solutions, if you're working with real businesses and getting real results, then let Give people know it. Now, I'm yeah. not saying go out and brag. I think there's a fine line between being an annoying bragging person. But if you're achieving and succeeding, when you're having these coffees, don't be afraid to say to people. Don't. In fact, it comes down to this. I think, don't be afraid to lose the deal to prove your worth. Totally. So you're good. if you're Show. sitting and having yeah. that coffee, say, so, you know what, I'm really, I've got this going. Uh, we're working with this mob, this mob. You know, I've got eight clients on the run. It's really good. Things are going well. The solutions are great. They're getting great outcomes. And then the person comes and lowballs you. Well, you you got to sit there and say, well, I've already got eight people. You know, what's that line? Well, I think you're a bit, you know, I think you're a bit expensive. Well, you know what? I've got 10 clients who think you're cheap. Because they're paying a, well above the odds than what you're offering. A, and, and that's the key, right, is to be able to position that value. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the reason why I want to work with your company is because this is what I can deliver and this is what I have been delivering with others and this is, let me show you how I do this. So that they get an understanding of what that value proposition is and you actually get some insight into actually how good you are at doing what you do. So, Thanks. yeah, great, great points, mate. Real good. You know, I think it can be daunting. That's you know, I think we all suffer it at times. Is you know, totally. you, 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 your biggest critics yourself, and yourself doubt your own belief and your own values. And look, I've suffered it hundred percent. I put my hand yeah. up for that. Um, no, no, it's true. We all we all have times in our lives, mate. We've all gone down that path, and it's just a case yeah. of, of pushing through that. Totally push through. Okay, all right. So just to finish off, mate, I reckon today's topic is so relevant to businesses right now getting out of the COVID environment, getting out into the community, hunting down the groups of people they want to be talking to. I just want to say, please, please, please be real, be be understanding different people's situations and the pressures that they're under, but use your skills and the products that you have to create better solutions because as consumers out there, that's what we're look, looking for. And to develop those leads, this is the, the easiest way for you to go, gain great success. So thank you very much for being with us today, Jonathan. Great to have all our listeners with us. I really appreciate the, the feedback we've been getting on these, and I'm looking forward to our next episode. And I think the next episode, we might have a very interesting topic, I think, that uh, people are going to need to check out. But uh, we'll leave it at that, and we'll uh, get them to check it out as it uh, comes live. What is it? Have we I'm not it? telling you now. <laughs> oh, by now. the way, Darren, the, the, the people who booked you, for, booked you for the keynote speaking, if they've got a slot, you know, Give me a call. I'll send them a letter. Nice work. Thanks, everybody. Take care. To see you later, mate. See you soon. Great to see you, mate. Cheers, mate. Bye.